second webinar. I'm your host, Brian Vesco with Twisted Sage Studios. So today we're talking about the wisdom wands. Uh, these particular tools, we'll go through a little bit of the history of them, but um, currently we have Oh, currently we have five different wisdom wands. Um, there's the original full size. There's a silver. Um, one of my favorites. I love the word the silver one as a pendant. Um, the silver wisdom wand and size comparison there. We have the mini wisdom wand, which is our zipper pull. Um, just to show you a size comparison. And then, of course, we have the Wisdom Wand Pendants, which we have the copper and brass, and we have the silver. And, of course, these guys are available with the clasp or with chains, lanyards. I really like the, the smaller Wisdom Wand. Um, it's a phenomenal pendant, um, one of my favorite pendants, really. All right, so... To give you a little bit of history and how the energetics of the Wisdom Wand came to be, um, we'll talk about the other wands previous, which we have four different wands previous that um, all make up the same energy, bring in those energetics to create the Wisdom Wand. And we're going to be going through activations and attunements with each of the wands that we have. So that way you can receive, you know, the the highest potential use out of the wisdom wand. So we'll go ahead and start with the golden fire and light wands. So these particular brass wands here, this one's the practitioner, the mini. Gosh, this one has been a favorite for years. This is the one that um, I traveled all over the country and elsewhere teaching anchoring columns of light. So this is a really a powerful, phenomenal wand, which we're going to go into detail on. Um, the Golden Fire and Light wand, the energetic, is also anchored into the Golden Fire and Light rods, the dowsing rods, uh, with the ball bearing swivel handles. Phenomenal tools. Um, so how these came about was my, my sister and I were looking for a way to put in the energetics into a dowsing rod that could do the things that we do with consciousness. So with dowsing, you can find geopathic or geomagnetic lines and you can clear them, you can move them, um, you can close portal vortexes, um, all with dowsing and consciousness work. So as Brenda and I were looking to create the etheric template, and that's it, is the etheric templates are what makes all of these different wands able to be put into the wisdom wand. The etheric templates are the higher dimensional aspects of these tools. Now, when we were trying to create an etheric template for the dowsing rod, and we had the intentions of what we were gonna bring into there, all those potentials and possibilities of clearing and moving geopathic and geomagnetic lines and underground streams, all the good stuff that you do with dowsing and earth energies. We found, we discovered this ancient etheric tool in energetically in this, in the higher dimensional plane, energetically it's this golden rod, it's golden white and it was fuzzy. Um, you know, it was just like this fuzzy field. When we discovered this, we found that it was clearing timelines and realities for the person, it would close portal vortexes, it would move and clear geomagnetic lines, um, but it wasn't activated at the time. So Brenda was called to, to do the activation with this, and then it just emits all kinds of different colors and sounds, this etheric part of the tool. So that was put into the specific measurements. Um, one is the standard Teotihuacan unit. So at first we had this anchored into just a single length this golden light rod. Then after we discovered the golden fire, we put that length into the handle. So now it is the golden fire and the golden light rod, which is why it's named this. So we do have an entire video called Light Anchoring 3.0. It's, it's a few years old, but it is one of the better light anchoring videos um, that we have out there. 
And still, I'll still walk you through some of the basic activations and attunements with this, but you can find more information, um, you know, on the light anchoring pages and, and on these wand pages. So to start, we do the sacred heart activation, and that's the golden fire. And then after that, once we are attuned to that energy, then we can use this to start anchoring columns of light and to run energy with. So um, basically, the portion, this brass rod that is in the wisdom wands, or the silver rod that's in the wisdom, silver wisdom wands, are what is anchoring in the golden fire and light rod. So you can use your wisdom wand for this exercise. Um, I just wanted to show you this, this specific ones here. So if you do not have um, any of the wisdom wands in your person, it is okay because you can go through and do these exercises without having to have the physical tool. And that's it is everything we're going to learn here today is basically consciousness work. I'm going to give you the attunements. So that is just the knowing of these specific higher dimensional fields that you can then bring in and utilize through your intention while you're in the heart space. So the first activation and attunement we're going to do is I'm going to attune you to the golden fire and light rod. The attunement is simply the knowing of it. And then we're going to have the activation of the sacred heart. So those are the first two things we'll do. Um, now, with the attunements and activations, um, for the sacred heart activation, there are several ways that you can do this. Now, I know that we used to send out a little booklet with the golden fire and light rods, which we don't anymore. It is um, a download. But basically, you could... The way that we always taught how to activate the sacred heart, which is the trifold golden flame heart that you always see Jesus and Mary depicted with, but this is beyond religion. This is the human heart. This is a facet of your light is this golden fire, this golden light. So one of the ways that you could activate that is simply running energy with your wand into your left palm and just intend that that flows up your arm and to the heart and all this is doing this is kind of like a ceremony it's something for the mind and the body um, to receive this activation it is the soul that does the activation for us so we're just going to go ahead and step into a meditation and have your soul come in and activate that sacred heart like I say, there's several ways you can do it. You can just run the energy. You can simply go into the heart space with the three breaths. Oh my goodness, we haven't gone into the heart space yet. Um, we started the recording before, so our, our group went in and we went to the heart space. And our entire group that is here, everybody that's online live, is holding space for you as you're watching this recording now. And so it's this beautiful sacred space container where all souls are together within this safe sacred space to assist one another. So let's go into the heart space, which is simply this three breath technique to move your consciousness from the head back into the physical heart. So here we go. Just closing your eyes, putting your attention onto the physical heart. Taking a deep breath in from the earth, right into the heart. Just connecting heart to heart with our beloved earth as she sends her light and energy up in support. Next, we connect with source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that higher power. Breathing in that light into the heart. This third breath in this Trinity breath is breathing in the energy of creation and the energy of earth together right into the heart. Then you are a column of light grounded, connected, and in the heart space. From here, we're going to work with your soul 
to activate that sacred heart, that golden fiery heart. So again, just closing your eyes, imagining your soul standing before you, however this presents to you. I usually see it as this golden luminescent being, or maybe you see it as an orb or just feel it. Your soul comes in, puts its hand on your heart, and we're gonna activate that golden fire, that sacred heart. So taking in a deep breath and allow your soul to activate that sacred heart in the highest and best good for you. So some people you might feel that heat. Use your imagination and intention to find that light, that fire within the heart and send that into every cell of your body in between every cell and just allowing it to light you up. This in itself is a very healing energy. We've seen some pretty miraculous things occur when people simply take the three breaths, the Trinity breath to go into the heart and use their imagination, visualization, intention to take that golden light, which is always there now, and send that golden fire, that golden light, wrap up whatever it is on the physical, mental, emotional life situations. Wrap it up in that golden light and just let it go. All right. So now that we have that activation of the sacred heart, next we're going to have the attunement to this higher dimensional tool known as the golden light rod. So if you do not have the golden fire and light rod or a wisdom wand, you can still receive this attunement. If you have your wisdom wand, no matter the size, all wisdom wands contain the same energetic field, the same connection. So it does not matter which wisdom wand size or flavor that you have. So if you have your wand, just hold on to your wand. If you don't, imagine holding on to a wisdom wand or the golden fire and light wand. This is all intention and we're holding the space. So again, just closing your eyes and just imagine holding that golden fire and light rod, that ancient etheric tool. In all reality, it is the soul that holds this higher dimensional aspect of this wand. The human and the physical wand are simply the physical anchors into this physical reality for these energies but it is always the soul that is doing the work with these tools. So if you feel that flow of energy, it is your soul stepping in and bringing you that attunement, the energetic of that golden fire and light wand. Awesome. You all have it within your knowingness. So to begin to start using this to anchor columns of light, which is a very, very powerful and simple and easy tool. So having your eyes closed, imagine anchoring this column of light in your home or in your space. You can either make this column of light small like three foot across so that you can stand in it like this little healing chamber or you can make it as big as your home whatever your intentions are for that size so simply having the eyes closed you're in the heart space imagining this column of golden white light maybe there's colors maybe there's sound maybe it's fiery just trust how it presents to you. But this column of light where you intend to create it, 
this column of light is just like the Trinity breath. That energy flows down from source, soul, creator, God, you. It flows down into the heart of the earth and the heart of the earth sends her light straight back up. So this column of light is just this ever flowing energy between creation and the earth. And it is that simple. Again, it is your soul doing the work. Your soul knows the intention. So don't overthink it. Don't make it hard. It is that simple and easy of just imagining that Trinity breath of that light from source, that light from earth, and it created that column of light. So with that column of light, it has that sacred heart, the golden fire that can cross over ghosts waywards because as they come into that column of light their soul comes in to do the sacred heart activation with them if they are a disincarnate spirit somebody who has died and not crossed over their soul will take them home so you can place these columns of light anywhere just to, you just it's simply using your imagination and your intention just like we did here. So if you wish to drop a column of light in a cemetery, that's perfect. You don't have to be there. You have to know the place. You have to have been there before or see a picture of it for you to tune into it. So you can imagine the cemetery and creating that column of light there or an old building in your neighborhood that just feels creepy. Also with columns of light, put it into water towers. This is huge. And this was my first experience with columns of light as I created a column of light that went into a water tower and I could see the water shift in frequency and vibration. The water became bright. It flowed through the entire distribution system into a person's glass of water into them when they drank it and back out into the earth. So it shifts the frequency and vibration of the water. It clears the memory of it. It brings in that higher consciousness of the water. When water's consciousness comes more embodied into the physical, it changes the physical structure of the water. It restructures it, balances the pH, clears the memory, of course, and it just raises the frequency and vibration. You can also use these columns of light in cell phone towers that is the biggest fear that people had for many years and so we were creating call we were teaching columns of light for people to put into cell phone towers so basically when you imagine a cell phone tower in your neighborhood or near your work or school or wherever again cannot be in fear when you're doing this work you have to be in the heart space so if you would like we can walk through this exercise one more time simply putting your awareness to a another place which you wish to anchor a column of light whether it is in a cell phone tower a cemetery a local grocery store your school imagine that space and imagine how big you want that column of light. I usually imagine it to be the size of the building or the space or the school grounds that I'm working with or the size of the cell phone tower. As you put your awareness there and you're in the heart space, because when you're in the heart space, you are untouchable and you are coming at things with all of this love and support of your soul. If we try to go in and we come from the head and we're like, oh, that damn cell phone tower, it's hurting all those kids or whatever your beliefs and fears from the head come through, it's not going to work. You have to be in the heart space and have that support. That's where your divine awareness comes from. So again, taking that breath into the heart from the earth, from creation, both together. You can do this in one breath to move into the heart. Now then, imagining where you want to put that column of light. 
and just see that column of light coming from source soul creator god down through that tower or building or space into the heart of the earth and the heart of the earth she sends her light straight back up through that space and back to creation so it's this ever flowing column of light that goes through that space beautiful beautiful i hope you feel that feel it in your in your body that that raising the vibration that tingling those are the shifts so when you do any of this work feel for the shifts because it just solidifies that work that you do when you feel it in your body when you feel the shifts all right so this column of light will stay there indefinitely or as long as is needed you never have to revisit it make it simple because simplicity is in the heart ceremony all the others are in the head so simplicity in creating the columns of light and this is so profound and as we move along here and we start to work with the wisdom wands when we anchor columns of light at that time we're going to be bringing in all of these other fields so right now as we're creating these columns of light they're the golden fire and the golden light which does great things but at the end of this webinar, when you anchor a column of light, it is going to have a completely different energetic. It will still have everything that we've done plus everything that we're going to do here. Okay, so next. Um, the next wand that came through. Um, I don't remember if it was the fairy wand or the dragon wand, but the fairy wand. This again is another one of the wands that we currently sell. Now, the fairy wand is connected to, it's more of an earth-based. It's more working with the, with the plant kingdoms, the mineral kingdoms, uh, the divas of the land, the, the, the fae, the fae of all different varieties, um, the inner earth beings, all of those who are very much a part of, of, the, of the earth. Um, so the fairy wand when you work with your wisdom wand it has the energetics of the fairy wand as well and really the fairy wand is one that we use more passively you know it is a pendant it's great for kids it's great for anybody um it does have um the golden fire energetics um which is great for transforming emfs dense energy dense consciousness all of that so basically when you're wearing the fairy wand passively it's just creating that field around you now to actively use it to connect with the fey um, again we'll go to the wisdom wands here um, you just simply go into the heart space and you have the intention of working with the earth the earth elementals such as the water air fire um, ether or you have the intention of connecting, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> or you have the intention of connecting to the fairy realm. And when you are working in these fields, only those that are within this higher vibration can be here. So when you're working here also, and you're working from the heart, you're not calling in any you know mischievous brownies or or anything like that that might not be you know in the highest and best so when you are working within these fields um and you have your wisdom wand and you simply go into the heart space and you ask to connect with the fey that would be in the highest and best for you to connect with and it might just transform or might it might transport you to that space so when I just did this I can feel see the space it's almost like um, for me it's almost like this little mossy cave in a forest and there's just all of these nature beings around 
and you can communicate and commune and work with these beings. Um, so, yeah, don't really know what else to really say about the fairy wand and working with that aspect of it, but it is there for those who are drawn to work with the fae. So next, we're going to go on to one of my all-time favorites, the dragon wand. Oh my goodness. Love my dragon wands. Um, so with the dragon wands, again, this wand in the field is within the wisdom wand. So to work with the dragon wands, there's a few different ways that you can do that. Um, so how I usually tell people to work with the dragons and with their dragon wand. And again, we're going to go to your wisdom wand, any size wisdom wand. And we go into the heart space. What I usually do, and this is just my own personal ceremony or way to connect, to create this field, to be, to invite in all of those in the highest and best into this field to work with. Um, now, if you're not familiar with dragons, um, there's a lot with dragons. Now, the dragons are phenomenal, phenomenal beings. They are very, very ancient, ancient beings. Um, we have a lot of dragons here on the planet, um, which I won't go into all the stories with the dragons. Um, but when we work with the dragons, they can do things from coming in. Um, there's a council of six dragons that we work with. Uh, there's one that has the dragon heart, the dragon sight, the dragon song, the dragon's fire. Um, gosh, I forget which all dragons there are. I think that's on our dragon wand page. But basically, um, working with the dragons, we've seen dragons come in where you have you know dense energy that you just haven't been able to clear, like on your leg or something. And we just ask the dragon to come in and he'll like, just like breathe fire on your leg and clear the dense energy and allow the healing to take place. Um, so those of you who are called to work with the dragons, um, you know, one of my soul aspects, one of my incarnations is a dragon. Um, I've met a lot of people out there who are very much, um, you know, they're enamored with the dragons and Usually, they have, too, an incarnation as a dragon. So, to work with the dragons and your wisdom wand, again, closing the eyes, if you wish, being in the heart space, grounded, connected. I like to just spin my wand around, you know, I'm just kind of doing this in a big circle around me, and I'm just imagining this field expanding out around to where it is the safe sacred space where those in the highest and best step in to be of service so when you create that space with your dragon wand it doesn't matter if you're clockwise counterclockwise i uh, usually spin just like this and just imagine that field expanding and as you're in the heart space, those that wish to work with you, work with your soul, again, the dragons don't necessarily work with the human, but they work with your higher consciousness, your soul, or that part of your soul. So when you create that field, you can then begin to communicate, to commune with those who step into your field. Again, only those in the highest and best will be within your space. So this is up to you to have that journey with and to have that communing with. All right, so we're going to keep moving here. Um, another way that the people will use the dragon wands is a lot of people, once they are attuned, once they are connected with a specific dragon or dragons, 
they simply use their wand to run energy. You know, there's a lot of people that will just come with their dragon wand and touch a spot on their body that has ache, pain, something that needs released. And simply, it just clears it because you have that connection and that help with the dragons. So you can, if you really are feel, if you feel inclined to work with the dragons, you can ask them to come through and work through your wand with you. It's just simply a tool for your attention. So then you can simply place it somewhere on the body and just intend that they come through and assist in clearing that energy. Because again, anything that is an ache, pain, dis-ease, discomfort is simply a blocked energy that needs to be released, harmonized, cleared. So the dragons are beautiful, wonderful critters to help with that. Okay, moving on next, the shaman's wand. So the shaman's wand is one that, um, gosh, the shaman's wand was one of my very, very favorite tools for quite some time. Um, the shaman's wand is one that, again, kind of like the dragon wand, I would just carry these passively in my field. Um, you know, the dragon wand, I just always clipped on. It was just always on my belt loop. I have one that hangs off my bike handlebars. You know, it's always with me. The shaman's wand, same thing. I just usually used it passively in the field that it creates around me because it just creates this beautiful high, vib high vibrational field. Now, the shaman's wand was made with the regeneration rings. It was a little bit higher, higher field, if you could call it that, higher, um, broader, it has a different bandwidth than like the golden fire. So the, the regeneration was our next energy after the golden fire. The story that I always tell is that I had this hiatal hernia, which is where the stomach flips. And it was always something to do with emotions. Um, and, you know, and I, I worked on it. My sister worked on it. I had other friends that worked on it for years. Um, you know, and that stomach would just always flip, that hiatal hernia. Now, one day, I laid down on my bed, and I took the wisdom wand, and I simply wanded it. Wanding is simply making a circle or a figure eight and running that energy. And I just made, imagine making this bubble around my stomach. And that was it. I did not have the intention of healing, clearing. It's a soft intention. Again, when we use these tools, it is your soul that is doing the work. The human has the intention. When, I'm, when I was wanting my stomach, of course I had the intention of doing something beneficial for my stomach. Well, two minutes later, I sat up. The hernia was gone. And I went back and I could find that it was never in existence. It cleared that creation. Pretty, pretty amazing. Um, the wisdom wands. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> the shaman's wand. So the shaman's wand, um, what came next is... Um, energetically was the chalice energy and the chalice energy was one that we were seeing on creating creation so it was very interesting that the regeneration energetics in the shaman's wand was the first thing that we saw on create creation that no longer serves us so after that we run into three other energies the chalice energy which is this crystal clear pure consciousness light this chalice energy simply um, is standing a duality. So if we see duality as a black and white marble, the yin-yang, it is the driving force, the engine of creation in this universe of duality. That is the way the universe has, be, has been since the inception, since the beginning of this universe. It has been about duality. Now, this chalice energy, this crystal clear, pure, pure light, 
So it's like this third marble. It has always been here since the beginning of the universe, but it has been awaiting this time right now. Because we are in a whole new time within this entire universe of shifting out of duality. So this chalice energy comes in. It doesn't fight the dark. It doesn't take sides with the light. It just is. It just is. And both the dark and the light release. There's no more balancing, driving force of creation. It just releases. So with this chalice energy, it was something, again, that we were seeing um, empowered the, the human and the soul to be able to put your awareness onto something and uncreate creation that no longer serves you. So the next energy, so we're getting to the wisdom wand here because the wisdom energetics consists of these three newer energies, the chalice, the divine I am, which is the energy of the soul. So this is our alchemist set of rings, is the chalice, the divine I am, which is the energy of the soul. And this third one is the harmonizer, as I call it. The harmonizer is this energy that exists in that plane between all frequency, vibration, and light in consciousness beyond all physicality, frequency, vibration. So this harmonizer ring exists in that plane, which allows consciousness to more come into the physical. I call that harmonizer energetics um, a cosmic blender. So if you see behind me, this is the alchemist halo, this ring in the back. It's an interwoven ring. So one of these rings is the chalice, one is the divine I am, and one is the harmonizer. When all three of these energies come together right here in the center, it is creating this wisdom field. That is where the wisdom wand comes in. So this is going to be the most powerful tool in your toolbox, I believe, is working with this particular field, the wisdom field. The reason that it is called the wisdom field is that it is... Um, gosh, long story. So as the human humanity, we have gone through eons of, of experience. So the, the way my understanding and, and my belief and the way that I see it is, is that you have source, you have creation, you have, you have the, I am, this is god it, it is the source it, you know creation from there you know you always hear about how source one and two experience experience itself um so from source came the soul then the soul had incarnations so let's just look at it here on earth as the incarnations of the human the soul has all these incarnations and the whole idea was to have incarnations and to have experience and that experience come back to the soul and back to the I am to source as wisdom as experience um, creation um, witnessing itself so that's my total belief and understanding and is in alignment with what we're doing with these wisdom fields is, is that we have all these incarnations, the human incarnations, we'll just stick with the human, and that they would come in, especially here on Earth. You always hear about how Earth is just the school, the school for the soul. It's a hard knock school. But we come in and we have experiences no matter how beautiful, no matter how deep and dark they are, no matter how painful they are, we come here and we have experience. And that experience of an entire lifetime flows back to the soul as wisdom. There was at one point in time, perhaps during Atlantis, that we began to hold on to these experiences throughout time I am my trauma I am my experience 
and it goes from lifetime to lifetime. That is why, especially like in the past three years, all the energy healer and workers have been seeing that a lot of these things that affect people here and now, physical, mental, and emotional, don't come from this lifetime. They come from other times because I am my experience. I am my trauma. We stopped releasing it to the soul as wisdom. We kept it held. And so all these lifetimes, we have held on to these traumas, these experiences. And instead of releasing them to become wisdom. And wisdom I see as consciousness, the soul's light. So as we do these exercises that are coming up, we're going to bring our soul, our divine awareness to these different lifetimes. As we do, as we bring our soul's light to that particular lifetime, that is released. All of that dense energy, all of that information is released as wisdom, as light, as consciousness that comes to the soul, then that lifetime is cleared. It's released. You've received all the wisdom. So basically I see it as the soul coming in and distilling the light and information out of an experience, out of a lifetime. And then that comes in as, as more light, as more consciousness. So what we've seen through this experience is, is that when we go back through to all these different lifetimes, and we allow the soul to distill the light and information out of that lifetime, the soul becomes brighter because of these human experiences. The deeper, the darker the dive you have is, as a human, the more light and wisdom is elicited from that lifetime. And my God, if most humans are like me in that we've had some pretty deep, dark, hellacious dives of experience in this in this world, not to mention everywhere else, everywhere else in the universe, because this entire universe is built in duality. So basically, we're going to go through and do this exercise to where you become divine awareness with the wisdom wand. And then you just start to bring in all of these lifetimes of experience and your soul distills the light and information out of them, bringing it in as consciousness, light, wisdom. And then they're cleared, released. So um, here we go. We're going to do this meditation. Um, this is huge because really everything right now is about consciousness and amassing your consciousness. Um, all the profound healing that we've witnessed over this past year has to do with using consciousness, wisdom, your soul's light. Um, gosh, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll stop with the concepts and we'll just go ahead and have the experience. So here we go. Um, actually, let me just say a couple more heady things and tell you about what the experience is that we're going to have here. Um, and of course, you'll have your own experience and your own, you know, sight, perceptions, feelings of this whole thing. But where I'm going to walk you into the space is basically, um, I see the wisdom wand is creating this fibrous cocoon around you. It's, it's like, um, you know, from about here all the way down to about, you know, the pelvis. And this this cocoon that comes in around you within it is your light untainted and untaintable your true soul's light is untouchable you may have all these human experiences but your light is untainted and untaintable so as we create this fibrous cocoon, within it is your light. It becomes not only a transformer, an alchemist. You become the alchemist. We're using these energies of the chalice, the divine I am, which is the soul, and this harmonizer, which is bringing it here now. And so when we do this meditation, we're going to bring everything that you are as a soul into this very moment within this 
fibrous cocoon space and you just become an alchemizer and you also become this giant magnet for your soul so throughout time we've seen like um, when we do these works with lifetimes no matter where they're at in this universe I see it as these little lights that come in it's a little piece of light so if you think of the human the human has soul spark. It has the spark of light, a spark of your soul. But it is only this tiny little particle of light, which is your soul, which is so profound and huge beyond human understanding. So as we bring in all these little particles of light, this wisdom, that is what we're doing, is we are bringing everything back into the here now. And then as we bring in all this wisdom, you raise in consciousness. So we talked about water and how water that can have all this memory, you know, um, Dr. Emoto, you know, we talked about the work and how water has this memory and, you know, we did the rice experiments and things like, well, and he did the water experiments to where basically you put in negative emotions in the water and then you put in positive emotions into another water and then he took the the special photographs of these and and you know some of them were really beautiful and the other ones that were negative emotion were just ugly he also did the rice experiments which is basically the same thing put in emotions into a jar of rice one negative emotions you know hate anger the other one all the beneficial emotions so basically um, and that's just emotions and how they affect water now we're working with consciousness which is far beyond human emotions far beyond human emotions human emotions are way down here consciousness is the soul the soul's light but with water so think of water how it contains the memory and it can be um the ph can be high or low and it's just um you know and and structurally it's not um the original crystalline structure it's just all discombobulated and and sticky and connects with and just brings in like heavy heavy metals and different minerals um it's just kind of like this discombobulated array this this water molecule or um not a water molecule but just that water so when we connect when we were doing the columns of light with water what we were doing was bringing in the consciousness of water and bringing it in in body when the consciousness of water embodies itself not only does the ph balance but it becomes that original crystalline structure of h2o um, it just becomes brighter and lighter and water can totally heal itself it can clean itself because of the consciousness that is what we're going to do for the human and for the soul and all that the human is is we're going to bring everything that you are into this here now moment and we are going to bring in everything that you are and that is where we see the healing the the, the harmonizing the the releasing of all dense energies again healing is simply releasing and rebalancing so um okay I just really want you guys to, you know, consciously grasp at how flipping profound this is. Um, we did a December 3rd, 2021 meditation, the zero point of the soul, and that's kind of what we're going to be doing here. So you can certainly go back to our 50 questions Friday from December 3rd of 2021 and find that zero point of the soul um, meditation. But here we go. We're going to jump in. So we're going to go to the heart and again, putting your attention onto your physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire. And then just imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that light of the earth right into your heart. Connecting to the heart of creation, source, soul, creator, God, you breathing in that light of you as creator into the heart we are such powerful beings you guys breathing in you as creator now we take that third breath breathing in the energy of source soul you 
the energy of earth, we become that column of light, grounded, connected, and in the heart space. Now, as you hold your wisdom wand, or imagine holding your wisdom wand, it just creates this reddish, brownish, fiber, fibrous cocoon around you. And within there is your light, untainted and untaintable, just bright and brilliant. And it begins to act as a transformer and a magnet. So now our intention is to bring in everything that you are as a soul throughout all time, all incarnations. As you breathe in and just bring in everything that you are into this here now moment, it transforms, it releases. You can connect to your darkest, darkest incarnations, your most horrendous experiences throughout all time and be completely, perfectly safe because you are that transformer of all energy. All of this is your energy and it is here to be in service to you, not to happen to you. So as you just allow your soul, your light to become that transformer. And as you bring in all that you are, you just become brighter. Your soul comes in within this space and distills the light and information from those lifetimes, from those experiences, brings it in as more consciousness, wisdom, light. Don't let your mind get into this. Stay in your heart center. You might feel some, uh, some levels and layers of chaos. It's okay. You're bringing in that chaos and transforming it. You are now an alchemist within this space. <sighs> Allowing your soul to do the work. You are alchemizing all lifetimes, all experiences. And you are becoming brighter because of it. You are amassing your consciousness, your wisdom. Okay. So this really is a beautiful place to sit and to be. And again, make this simple just the three breaths to go into the heart space or even a single breath to go into the heart space and just imagine being that brilliant light, that alchemist that turns all experience into wisdom. Now from this space, I have not met a thing that I could not either change or change my reaction to it. So if there's something that comes up in your awareness, whether it is an emotion that you don't know where it comes from, like a sadness or a grief, or whether it is a life situation that just keeps haunting you, or whether it is a pain in the body, we need to stay within the heart and stay within this field of your light but from there, you just put your awareness, shine your light. I call it divine awareness. My sister calls it shining your light. You just let that light flow to that specific situation. And your soul transforms that experience into wisdom. And then it releases transforms, alchemizes the rest of that situation. This really is huge. This is where 
we are stepping in and being creators by first uncreating creation that no longer serves us. We are in a new paradigm. We do not have to follow all the old ways that we have done for eons of soul growth and learning. We are now here stepping into being creators. And again, the first thing that we do as creators is we uncreate creation that no longer serves us. So that as we step into true conscious creation, we're not using our old palette of crap to paint this new creation as we step forward. We first release, harmonize, bring into wisdom all these experiences. This includes programs or beliefs, old soul contracts, oaths, vows, promises. So again, let's come into this space of that fibrous cocoon of your brilliant light, however you see and feel this. And ask your light, your soul, your consciousness to release, to alchemize, to bring to wisdom all these things that no longer serve you, programs, beliefs, stuck emotions throughout all lifetimes, old contracts, oaths, vows, promises, unfinished business. Because all this unfinished business that you have spent maybe lifetimes and eons that you've been working on, it is okay to allow that to come to wisdom because that is the reason that you have done all of this is for the expansion of creation, the knowingness, the wisdom. So it is okay to allow, again, your soul is in charge. So the more that you can surrender to your soul, the more that you can allow as the human, the letting go of handing this all over to your soul, your soul has your best interest, your light, your wisdom, your consciousness knows best for you. It has that higher perspective. So the more that you just allow the soul to come in and release, the more happens. Okay. So coming back to here, back to the human and the here and now, bringing yourself back into your body. You've always been here in your body, but bringing your awareness to this here and now. So I'd like to share with you a way to use this divine awareness, this light from this space to clear, to clear anything that comes up. Now, if you have something like an ache or a pain and let's, let's just do this. If you have something that you wish to work on, and let's find something physical first. So you're in your heart space, you've connected to earth, connected to creation in your heart, and you feel your body, your field. And if there's something that you wanna work on, you're in your heart space, you know what it is that you wanna work on. Now then, let's step beyond the heart, let's step into that higher, more refined space of the soul. Some call it the quantum heart. Maybe it is that cocoon of light. But we step beyond the mind, beyond the human heart.
just into that higher, more refined space, that space of the soul. And if you notice, you don't even really remember what you were working on, which is perfect. That's kind of the point, is you bring it to your light. And you allow your light to do the alchemization, to turn that pain into wisdom, because that pain is nothing more than stuck energy. So your soul's light comes in, turns that stuck energy, either alchemizes it into a new energy that serves you, or perhaps it turns it into wisdom. consciousness and then you step back into the heart again and then from the heart space feel into that which you were working on if you can even find it but if you find it it might not be the way that you remember it before you allowed your light to shine on it. And perhaps there are still some things in there, which is absolutely perfect to be able to revisit things because so many of these things can be multi-layered again throughout lifetimes. All right, so coming back again, your awareness here now with the webinar. So now then, when you use your wisdom wand to anchor columns of light like we did earlier, you are bringing your potentials through that column of light, your knowledge, your wisdom when you do healing with another person it's the two souls that come together your soul holds space especially when you're bringing all this wisdom and consciousness to the space and their soul is the one that does the work so if you are working with somebody that's what it is is that you are reminding you are shining your light which is your wisdom your consciousness your soul and showing another soul another human those higher potentials and possibilities because so often we get stuck in this little confined space and not seeing from that little confined perception you know, we all know that space. You're in your pain body and nothing goes right and everything keeps going wrong and, and you can't see beyond that little confined space. When we step in and we shine our light, we hold that light and it allows that confined space of another to open up, to expand to see other potentials and possibilities rather than that little confined space. So that's something that comes through in the columns of light. That's something that comes through when you use your wand. Now, let's go back to the wisdom wand and this physical tool. You can do the columns of light. You can run energy. Now, I know a lot of times when we get caught in those little confined, constricted spaces where we can't, where we have a hard time connecting, we, you know, it, it's tough to bring in all that wisdom and light when you're stuck in that little confined space. That's where I like having the physical tool because basically, if you have something that you're working on, you got caught in your pain body and, and you're not able to connect, whatever. Um, start running energy with your wand you know again just making those circles and that's how i do it is i just make little 
clockwise circles, doesn't matter, counterclockwise, figure eights. You can even just point it or touch the space. For me, I just like to run energy by making those circles. So as you begin to run that energy into what the issue is, it starts to expand everything. It's, it will clear that dense energy, which is why, you know, what whatever it is that you're working on, again, everything is energy. That's just stock energy, stock dense energy. So when you use the wand to run energy, you start to loosen that up. You start to alchemize that. You start to turn that into wisdom and light, consciousness. And then you can start to expand and then you can connect and then you can do the real work with the consciousness of, of shining your light, of bringing your divine awareness. And again, to do that, simply take the three breaths to go into the heart space and start inviting in all of your light. Bring everything into center, into here and now. Just amass all of that light and wisdom and consciousness into this here and now moment. And remember to breathe with it. Breathe it in. The breath is an important thing to move that energy. So first thing in the morning, first thing before you go to bed, before you work with anything, bring in your light. And that is your soul. Talk to your soul. It is there to hold space for you as the human to become the transformer, to become the alchemizer. Because everything is your energy. And it truly is here to serve you. But again, for eons, we've been creating in a different way. And now we are going through and mopping up and cleaning up and turning everything into wisdom, consciousness, and light. Okay, so um, let's have some questions now because um, we are on a live webinar here. And so um, for people that are on the webinar, we'd love for you to drop some questions in the questions tab and I will put um, answer some questions from emails that have come in. So let's see. So some of the questions, if one is using a wisdom wand to perform energy healing, does one need to disconnect the wand from the subject after the energy healing is complete? So again, if we're working with another person, um, a great way, to, okay, so there's a couple ways that you can work with another person. Um, you know, it used to be that when we did work human to human, you know, we'd go and ask Aunt Martha for permission to do energy healing on her because we were coming from a person to a person. When we do the work this way, we are going soul to soul. And so the best way to do energy work with another person is to go into that sacred space of the heart bring all that you are into that space, then bring in that person. Connect with Aunt Martha as the human and Aunt Martha as the soul. And basically you're just sharing your light and your wisdom with Aunt Martha. Because the healing is the two souls coming together you're holding space, you're holding all of these higher potentials and possibilities. And then her soul is the one who does all the work. Her soul is the one who decides. It is a reminder to the human and to the soul that we are stepping out of the old paradigm, that we are here to no longer be here for soul growth and learning and completing lessons and all the stuff, that we are here to be creators, to begin to uncreate creation that no longer serves us. So as you are simply holding that light with Aunt Martha, however it is that you visualize, maybe you put a column of light around her. Maybe you're just shining your light. Maybe you're just sitting there with her sitting there with her like if she's over on the other side of the country. Just imagine sitting there with her and sharing your light. And when you come in, come from the heart, 
and you're not there to heal her or fix her or oh poor aunt martha and her big broken toe and her cancer no no we we do not hmm a lot of times when somebody is asking for help or they come into our awareness for help and we look at them and we're like oh man that cancer and oh i feel so bad and you are helping to co-create that reality when you come from the human and from the head and from the emotions you are helping to co-create that reality you simply make that reality solidify it make it stronger for that person a lot of people who get caught into the drama and they ask you hey can you help me out with this drama and then you step in and you help co-create that drama to solidify it more because we are all powerful creators so don't step into creating co-creating something that does not serve stay in your light simply share your light share your wisdom share your consciousness with them then their soul will do the work you're not here to do the work for them you are here to show them their light their potentials and possibilities that's it so yes when you are doing the clearing work um, with another that's that's how you do it and and yes totally um so the other part of the question is do i need to disconnect from them so watch for chords i mean chords between people chords you know chords come a lot so if you are working on somebody just um yeah just ask to be completely clear disconnect from them so that way you're not still in their little reality of creation um you know and it can just be simple intention okay i disconnect and then you disconnect from them. That way you're not sitting there unconsciously helping them co-create that creation. Um, let's see, next question. Does the wisdom wand need to be energetically cleansed after each use? And no, because these are self-clearing. All the tools that we create here at Twisted Sage are self-clearing tools. So never need cleaned or cleared. Um, and then this is a question we get a lot so if you have a wisdom wand pendant is it okay to gift that to another friend or loved one after you've been using it yes because it is self-clearing and so if you pass on your tools to another you never have to wor worry about it carrying your junk or if you get it back you don't have to worry about it carrying their junk back to you they will remain clean and clear unless you choose otherwise you know because we are powerful creators so just go in your heart space and yeah well i won't even go down that road um but yeah no they are self-clearing tools um let's see so we'll jump over here to some questions um is karma just stuck energy yes you know um and and there's you know of course karma is quite quite the quite the word that a lot of people use for a lot of things you know karma itself it's been about 12 years ago that karma was released but it was our choice whether we wanted to keep it you know and still live and play in it but we certainly do not have to it is a choice so we can simply choose to no I, I no longer participate um, so that's it too if you get caught into other people's stuff or the people's co-created drama or if you just get caught into mass consciousness go to the heart bring in your light amass your light and wisdom and simply say I no longer participate I make a choice when I was going through nine months of a deep dark dive here a year and a half for well, about two years ago I started and it went for nine months um, and that whole time you know Brenda said a lot of times it's a choice Brenda my sister you know my my spiritual mentor um, Brenda with the elders three um, she would always tell me it's a choice and I'd be like no it's not a choice I did not choose this you know and God I didn't choose to suffer and all the stuff oh really yeah we might not have 
consciously in this lifetime or this time right here said, okay, I'm going to choose this, but we didn't choose this. Nothing happens to us that we do not choose and allow. And, um, you know, nothing happens to us that goes against our soul. So choice is a huge thing um, in working with that, some of that outside stuff. So, and, and we're still talking about karma here. So karma and other energetic influences. Um, you know, it's kind of like TV, the, the news, you know, like, like we always said, you know, don't watch the news if the news changes you. If you can be in your power and your light and you watch the news and you can change the news by sending your light into it without getting caught in the drama and co-creating that drama, then that's the way to go. But if you can't, if you can't look at it without being sucked into that co-creation and you co-creating that with it, then don't look at it. Um, but so as far as the releasing of the karma as stuck energy, yes, everything is energy. And so if it is causing issues within your being, um, you can make a choice that you no longer participate in that. And you can also just shine your light. So when you're in these fields and you're doing the work and you feel for those shifts, feel for the shifts, maybe the shivers, maybe you just, you know, you can just feel and know that something occurred. Then you know that something occurred. Um, it's really nice to be able to have, you know, that feeling, that knowing when you did something, even if you don't know what the heck you did. But, um, yeah, so hopefully I answered your question okay there. Uh, hey, Samson, um, is it okay to combine the Wisdom Wand pendant with the Quantum Heart Coil? Can it be too much having too many tools in our field? No, you know, the more tools that you bring together, just the more, the more potent, you might say, the field is. But you can never have too many tools, um, and you can never do harm with the tools. So if you want to, you know, gosh, Here's all the stuff I'm wearing. You know, I have, this is my daily wares that I have on right here. Oh, and I have this cool pendant from Leet's Wrapping Resin that she sent me that I put this cool little halo with. It's a Dan variety. I love this pendant. Um, but yeah, you can never be overexposed to the tools because you never get, um, you know, a detox from them, things like that. So it is perfectly okay to wear as many pendants and bling as you wish. Um, let's see, another question. If you anchor a column of light with a golden fire wand, can you update it using a wisdom wand to all new energies? Yes. So basically, if, like I say, if you don't, you don't need any of the physical tools to anchor the columns of light because now you, you can do it with consciousness. And that's really the point of all these tools is these are simply, they are, once you are a tuned and have the activations and all the good stuff that you know these things um you don't need to have a wand to anchor that column of light you know that's the way i always taught was you know you use the wand and it was simply you know you hold it there and imagine this column of light that was simply ceremony for the mind um but you truly do not need any of these tools you can use a pencil and imagine a pencil if you need a physical uh, placeholder when you're anchoring a column of light but you can go back through yes so if you have anchored columns of light because man there's so many of us that have anchored thousands of columns of light all across the country and all the cell phone towers all the, like you know just all these places that we felt dense energy and you can actually just go through and yes just when you go through just um add this new energetic to it just make it simple. Be in the heart space. Imagine where that column of light is, like let's say in your local cell phone tower. Just imagine it and imagine it with this updated energetics of the wisdom field in it so that you just have this beautiful wisdom field. Because it used to be when you anchor a column of light with the golden fire into a cell phone tower, the cell phone tower would then broadcast the frequencies of love and gratitude. It would send out all these beneficial energies throughout the waves. Unless you were um you know the human who did not know that and you look at that cell phone tower and you're like oh man that thing is harming me and it's hurting everybody well then you override override the the whole column of light and creating beneficial frequencies for you so then for you 
you you chose to create this non-beneficial field. And so you can override the tools. I mean, another person can. So if you're anchoring columns of light, um, you know, it's going to be beneficial for everybody unless they choose that it is not. Um, so, yeah, you can totally update your column of light now with this new energetic that you have and that you carry as that alchemist. Again, the work that we just did, your soul shines brighter. You have more consciousness now. More consciousness. I mean, this is huge. This is huge. Whew, I can feel a lot of you feeling that. That's, <laughs> that's good stuff. Um, let's see. Another question. Does the physical movement of the wand with our soft intentions enhance more movement and flow for moving out the dense and stagnant energy as well as ushering in more light than just pointing the wand or thinking the intentions? So the, the question basically is um, about using this to move energy. You know, for myself, I can just point this at my palm and I don't really feel it. But when I start to spin it, I feel that pulsing. Um, you know, and I'm not sure if it's just because it is my belief about that, which I kind of feel it is, um, or my intention, but then again, a lot of the tensor tools that we create just like to spin. It's like they, um, okay, we're dealing with a few different levels of energetics. When we are running energy to the physical body and the physical body is feeling that, that is in, you know, kind of like, let's say, this bandwidth energy. But if we step up and we bring in this entire bandwidth as consciousness and we're simply doing the energy work, so instead of trying to do this healing work with my hand, I'm going to step into my light and I'm going to shine my divine awareness onto the hand and then it is going to be affecting it more. Um, so, gosh, I'm sorry, I'm to kind of answer this question more, I do feel like when you are using movement with the wand that you are creating more movement in this physical plane and flow. When you are doing the movement with the wand and you're in the heart space and you are allowing your light to come through, then you're doing so much more than just working in this bandwidth on the physical plane. You are allowing your light to come through more gosh i hope i hope i i hope that there was some clarity in that answer um let's see um when installing a pillar of light that fill, that fills a whole valley and river, would you recommend starting with several smaller individual pillars at key locations, then create an umbrella pillar, or begin with a big one and construct smaller focuses after that? You know, so that's really a good question about the size of the columns of light. Now, again, it for me, I feel it was very much a belief that when I create a column of light, I can only create a column of light about 20 feet wide. Where when Brenda, she creates a column of light, she can create it as wide as she wants. And it still has the same potency as my 20-foot wide column of light. So I really feel that it was in, that it's in my belief structure, oh, which I need to just find that with my wisdom field and just clear and release that. And that's it too. When you run into these belief structures or these programs, totally you can clear them with that divine awareness. So for me, traditionally, when I anchor a column of light, you know, they're about 20 feet across. So like, let's say when you're working with that valley and that river, you know, I always like to go up river all the way to the source and put in my columns of light there because then that affects the water all the way down through it. I also like to put columns of light through bridges. That way people drive through it and it's affecting the water. Um, so you can totally make one giant column of light over that entire valley. We truly can. Um, the only limits are your beliefs and your imagination. Um, but when we are in the heart space and we are connected to these fields and to your light, um, 
imagination and intention is is one of the ways that that we work so really your imagination and intention um you know those are your only limits Uh, do you anchor golden light and fire or just anchor light or use colors or platinum? What is an effective saying while anchoring? So basically, however it presents to you when you're anchoring a column of light, and as far as an effective saying while anchoring, don't step in and try to limit it to any specific colors or energies or anything specific. Because when we do the work from the human and we put in our beliefs and our limitations and 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 everything else we're not doing much i mean we're doing some good things but that's part of being in the sacred space of the heart and allowing your soul to do the work so again when we anchor the column of light we're always in the heart space and again if we're working on you know that cell phone tower or your kid's school or whatever it is you know and we get into emotions and fear about it we come back into the head again and we are totally putting limitations on everything that we do so we got to move into the heart trust your soul so basically, you, I mean, and this isn't just saying that we're disregarding you as the human and your perspectives and everything. Because again, when you're in the heart space and, you know, and you're wanting to use these other colors and platinum and everything like that, um, that's perfectly fine. You know, that you're in the heart space and that's your intention to bring through all this stuff, but yet you still surrender to the soul that you allow your soul to bring the highest potentials and possibilities through in that column of light not what you feel and believe they should be allow your soul to do it because your soul is really the one that's doing the work we are the physical anchors the witness for it um all right so just checking out, see if we had any other questions here. All right, it looks like we've hit all the questions. Well, thank you all for being here and for doing this work. Um, let's see, uh, a couple more questions. Uh, do you teach dowsing? No, you know, I, I have gone, I have been, um, a keynote for the American Society of Dowsers and have gone there a few times, but um, under our dowsing rod page, there is a, um, a video there that is from the dowsing conference. It's, you know, it's like a three hour, three or four hour conference. Um, and I videotaped it all, but in the dowsing that I teach, it was more about using the energetics of the wand and not, you know, the specifics on the dowsing. Um, it was more about accessing these higher dimensional fields and using those. Um, can the wisdom wand be used to open the lymphatic system in the neck and head area and get the kidneys filtering properly? Oh, most definitely. So basically, when you're using the wand and you're, you know, like like Brenda, she knows the, the physical body really well. So she knows the organs and their functions and, and, and all this stuff. So she's pretty good at it <laughs> she's pretty good she's phenomenal what she does um because she's been able to especially in the older ways and that's it is in the older paradigm of the way that we worked we would we would visualize thing we'd have visualization and intention from the heart space and that's where like if i had a rib out i could text my sister and i could feel her pushing my rib back into place um you know and then anymore, she doesn't even read the text. It is that aspect of her that comes in and does the work. And then anymore, the way that she does the work and that we are all doing the work now is, is that we don't even get into the specifics. So like if you are working on the lymphatic system and the neck and head area to get the kidneys functioning properly, you go into the heart space. When you're in the heart space, the sacred space of the heart, you have the intentions that you're going to work with the lymphatic system and to and to get your kidneys bolstered to get them 
you know, back online 100%. When you're in the heart space, you have that intention. And then you step aside. You step aside and allow your soul, your light, your consciousness to flow in and do the work. That is, that leads to the most profound of it all is allowing your soul to do the work. You can certainly still make that intention when you're in the sacred space of the heart, but then you step aside and allow the soul to do it. But if you're using your wand, yeah, you can totally just wand, run energy to those specific organs, those specific glands. And that will also clear any of the dense and stuck energies there. So again, when we're doing healing work, we are simply clearing stuck energy. Healing is simply releasing and rebalancing. And with this wisdom field, your soul can come in and alchemize. Let's say there's a stuck energy. Um, you know, a lot of times we'll get like a pain in like a leg or something and we can sit there and wand it. We can feel, feel the pain move. It'll move up to your right knee or something. And so you just keep chasing that energy around. So then you always know that there's something energy and not something energetic that then caused the physical, but that it's just simply energy that's causing the pain or disruption. And with these fields, it'll either alchemize it into uh, something new that benefits you and serves you. And that's what I like to do about these energies that aren't mine that come in and it's just like, I don't know, I just picked up some dense energy somewhere and it's stuck to my leg. So that's at the time that I like to just um, intend that I am alchemizing that energy, that I am changing that dense energy into something new that benefits me. You know, that's, that's a great intention to have, too, when you're working with any stuck energies. Um, usually stuck energies are yours. And sometimes you can just get dense energy stuck to you, um, which you can just transmute, just clear. Um, so. All right. Well, everybody. Thank you for being here. And um, if you have any further questions, uh, feel free to jump on our next 50 question Friday and you can ask questions there and clarifications and such. So anyway, thank you very much for being here at our Wisdom One webinar. And I hope that this energy serves you well. And thank you all for raising everything this entire world in consciousness because as we each do the work we don't have to go out to change the world because the work that we do where we are connected into this mass consciousness grid we are holding that light that higher potentials and possibilities for everybody so it's so beautiful because it only takes a certain amount of us that are holding a higher light, a higher consciousness to affect everybody around us, the entire mass consciousness grid. So, you know, this is kind of the new paradigm where we don't have to be the light warriors. We don't have to go out and anchor columns of light and look for the dark, dense stuff. Because truly, as you go out into the world, and the more that you can stay present and in the heart space and just a radiant being, that is where we affect everything. We don't have to go out and do. And even if you're not in the heart space and you're having a really bad day, just you being here in the physical, you are still radiating light and consciousness. It doesn't matter if you're stuck in the human or anything like that, you are still radiating consciousness and light, which affects everything around you. But the more that you can be present, then when you look out into the world, everything that you see, you are affecting change. You don't have to do a thing. So it's really beautiful. Um, thank you all for being here. Till next time.